Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Topic of our uh, top presentation today is selecting a sample using non-random, non-probability sampling method. Now, sampling is the process of selecting a few. That is a sample from a bigger population or group. That is the sample pop sampling population to become the basis for estimating or predicting the prevalence of an unknown piece of information, situation, or outcome regarding the bigger group. A sample is a subgroup of the population you are interested in taking the sample for you. Target population, that is your sample. We talked about different types of sampling. That is random sampling, then non-random and mixed. Today, our topic is non-random, non-probability sampling. Now, non-probability sampling design, they do not follow the theory of probability in the choice of the elements from the sampling population. There is no probability, there is no uh, choice in a sense. And uh, non-probability designs are used when the number of elements in population is either unknown or cannot be individually identified. You are at times not sure about the elements uh, in a population and therefore uh, or you cannot individually identify everyone so this is a general and then we have got some specific uh, some further examples of non-random sampling uh, researchers generally select elements for the sample based upon the hypothesis about the population of interest known as selection criteria for example if you are selecting a sample by stopping people on the street attempting to stop an equal number of men and women to coincide with the presumed gender distribution in the population would be a criteria of non-random sampling. Um, uh, it allows the non-random random sampling, it allows selecting a predetermined sample size individually. You, you, are, you know how much the sample size you are interested in and this is especially focused on that sample size. You are not uh, sure about the individual identity or elements of the sampling. There are different non-random design based on each based on a different consideration, which are commonly used in both qualitative and quantitative research. Some major are include the quota sampling, accidental sampling, judgmental sampling, or purposive sampling. So the first type of non-random, non-probability sampling design is the quota sampling. As the name suggests, you have, you, you have to have some required number of the participants in your study, and that if that is that is your quota and when you reach the quota the number of the participants required for your study this type of sampling it concludes and this is based on the researcher ease of access or convenience to the sample population in quota sampling the sample is selected from a convenient location convenient to the researcher and whenever a person with visible relevant characteristics that are required by the study they are seen that person is asked to participate in the study and the process continues until required number of respondents, which is the quota. They are contacted, the information that has been required, it is, uh, it, it is being taken from that individual, and it is being noted down and consent, uh, if required, it gets signed down, and then that your study completes, uh, utilizing the quota sampling. Example, let's say you, you need some, a sample of 20 male students to find out the average age of the male students in your class. So, one of the most convenient way to do it to conduct such sort of quota sampling is to stand at the entrance of classroom as this is convenient and whenever a male student he tries to enter into the room his age can be asked and it can be noted down and the process is continued until 20 male students they are asked about their age their age is being noted down uh, and if required then consent in, if, if other demographic information is also related to required in the, and then concept may be fine so whenever you reach the number maximum the, your quota number then the study uh, then the sampling completes is completed and it's based upon the conveniency of the researcher for example another option can be based upon your study you have already pre-decided that we might need a sample size of let's say about four person and uh, with male let's say inclusion criteria as male above 50. So what you can do is from your population, you simply identify those persons who get involved into the study uh, who are, let's say, male and above 50. 
as soon as you have desired number let's say code number four is you needed four persons is completed with the male person uh, having age above 50 your your quota sampling is completed and then you can continue with you know with further let's say it's, if it's a study based upon finding out some other requirements like uh, questionnaires from these males above 50 then it will be initiated the second type of non-random non-probability sampling design it is called as the accidental sampling it is also based upon convenience of the researcher in accessing the sampling the sampling population whereas the quota popular sampling attempts to include people possessing an obvious or visible characteristics whereas accidental sampling makes no such attempt you stop collecting data whenever you reach the required number of respondents you decided to have your, your sample and this this type of accidental sampling is more like a casual kind of sampling in which there are the the, the basic requirements or the standard requirements are the minimal in compare to the uh, to quota sampling where you you just consult contact the most e easily available persons to you you do not have the, that much criteria in your mind the visible characteristics or any special special characteristics in your mind you just contact the easily available conveniently available research, the participants to you and you get uh, you enroll them in your study this method of sampling is common among market research and newspaper reporters let's say there is no guidance of sampling by any obvious characteristics some people contacted may not have the required information that is the problem of accidental sampling as well one of the major drawback of this sort of them it is helpful uh, if uh, you you do not have got any specific sort of you know information uh, in your mind however the problem is some of the people you might be contacting they might not have absolute they might be totally unaware of the uh, study perspective that you have in your mind for example this is an example if i'm whatsoever the first person they come in uh, into contact with us with without any obvious uh, characteristics uh, you know and you are going to contact them you will start you know initiating your let's say uh, sort of your questionnaire your study and you will just ask them um, um, different questions related to your uh, study so it is direct as access convenient sampling you don't good thing about this sampling is it is good for you know some sort of awareness studies awareness campaigns they are uh, sampling for that those uh, however and the first person you get into contact you get the information however it is problem is the person they might not be uh, of good value to your study Another type of non-random, non-probability sampling design includes the judgmental or purposive sampling. And the primary consideration in purposive sampling is your judgment as to who can provide the best information to achieve the objectives of your study. On purpose, intentionally, the researcher decides the participants of the study so you as a researcher only go to those people who in your opinion are likely to have the required information and will be willing to share it with you uh, this type of sampling is extremely useful when you want to construct a histor historical reality historical reality or describe a phenomena or develop something about which only a little is known for example whenever you're conducting this type of study judgmental or purposive study is mostly it's mostly um, conducted on study participants who are at you are at times specialist of the field this is what is important you know because for example if you would like to uh, study some uh, uh, impact of let's say higher education on a, in a society let's say um, or impact of higher education on jobs so what you can do is you can simply you can go towards the top management people you know that they are the right person to contact in university let's say you would like to prefer to get into touch with uh, professors and associate professors and those are your study participants because in your consideration those are the best people to um, who are um, because of their higher education they are at, at, the, at the good post and then they can give you the relevant information with convenience as well and similarly it depends on other you know sort of thing where, where you are you know what who is better uh, 
who can be better utilized for your study. For example, purposive sampling, it's not like accidental sampling that everybody, everyone who comes in contact with you at your convenience and you will start throwing him questions. It's you will um, it's like that that you will among um, from amongst the participants, the researcher based upon his expertise based upon his own uh, intellectual capabilities he will select the study population and then he will contact them regarding the the sampling the subsequent sampling procedures um, there are a few important judgmental features about the judgmental sampling is it consumes minimum time for execution directly approachable respondents are available almost real-time results and it is a comparatively easy to conduct study and it provides you with, with, with authentic information at times because the source of information or the respondents that are chosen by uh, by the person they are they, come, they are of good uh, they might give, give you good findings for your uh, research however one of the major problem with judgmental sampling is the issue of biasness because whenever you choose whenever the researcher decides that he is going to get into contact with a specific you know uh, genre of people then he might be uh, giving favoritism to some of them might be consulting only those people who are you know who might be helpful in his opinion or her opinion thank you so much thank you for listening to this